said this world will rise against you enemies are bound to come but by his grace the victory's been won his love wins though your armor may Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Uh, and I do know that we do have a birthday today. Uh, my oldest has gotten a little older. So... So does anyone else have any birthdays? I think we've got some up here. Yep, we got some pennies up here. Yep, ooh, we got quarters, nickels, dimes. What do you want? Twenty-five. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Many more birthdays to you. Many more birthdays to you. Many more birthdays, God bless you. Many more birthdays to you. Now, does anyone have an anniversary? It's 
If not, we'll ask Brother Jim if he'll say the blessing over the Sunday school and the rest of the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here, Lord, for our, our opportunity to be here, Lord, in your house again, oh God. Pray, Lord, for Sunday school and for the teachers, Lord, for the lessons, oh God. Pray, Lord, that we can grow closer to you, dear Lord, and represent you in our life in this life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes. been uh, in Ephesians. Ephesians 4 is where we left off. Ephesians 4, 30 and 30 through 32. Ephesians 4, 30 through 32. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So, uh, <clears throat> of course, I love looking up words. So, grieve means to cause distress in somebody. So, when they're saying, grieve not the Holy Spirit, uh, to me, that means... Uh, to like the Holy Spirit, don't make the Holy Spirit sad. Uh, don't make it angry at you. Don't uh, don't cause the Holy Spirit distress. Or and uh, so by sin, such as corrupting the commu uh, communication, corrupt communication. As, as a way to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what he, uh, there are yellow things written there in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, oh, you know what? I was supposed to read all three of these verses. So let, let me start over. <clears throat> and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamoring and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, giving one another, one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So, so just as Dad said, the the second part of that verse is uh, so we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, and how we can not grieve them is to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamoring and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So, so this is, if we... Had to 
tickle in my nose. So, a way that we can not grieve the Holy Spirit is to keep all of this stuff out of our life. <coughs> and the, uh, and I, I looked up clamoring because I, I wasn't real sure what that uh, meant. But clamoring means uh, a... See, I had it written down right here. Uh, well, I, I looked it up. I must not have writ, wrote it down. But but clamoring means a loud, boisterous, uh, like someone who gets on the corner street and yelling and and stuff. That's clamoring. Uh, so. So we need to, uh, and the, uh, the part where it says in verse 30, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Does anyone have any, because uh, I know that this, people who believe uh, once in grace, always in grace, they always say that we're sealed, Okay. And uh, when, when I read this, verse 30 and 31, it, it tells me, and everyone can have their, uh, can, can let me know how I, I do in this, but uh, so if we grieve not the Holy Spirit, then we are sealed, okay? If we don't give the Holy Spirit any, uh, cause to be alarmed with us, then we are sealed. We're in God's graces. We're doing what God told us to do. So if we're doing what God told us to, then we are sealed. But when we start getting away from God's graces, which is in that 31, you know, the bitterness, the wrath, the anger, the clamoring, the evil speaking, uh, all of that stuff, then we get out of being sealed. We're no longer sealed. We're, we're on our own. We don't have, we're not in God's good graces. Right, that box when you uh, seal green beans, canned stuff, as long as it stays sealed, it's good. But once that seal is broken, it, it'll get bad. Amen. And that's, and that's the same way with this Holy Spirit. As long as you've got the Holy Spirit in you, you're good, but long if that seal is broken, it's no longer good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? That's where the grace comes in. God's grace gives us the opportunity to return to, in other words, to get back in fellowship. With Amen. Him. Because once we break that fellowship, because it's broken by us, not by Him. Amen. Not because He. He's always there with our straight arm, but we have to keep ourselves in line with Him, with His will, not our will. But He said, not our will, but His will be done. Uh, and that's one of the things that we have to always keep in mind. Amen. Okay, Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God for as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What's that? Even as God. Oh, did I forget even? Even as God has even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Uh so in that 32nd verse, so I, I lumped all three of these verses together because it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit, uh, let not bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamoring and evil speaking be away from you uh, with all malice. And in that verse 32, 
and. So it links it to the other verses. So not only do we, uh, do we have to let that evil speaking and that clamoring and all that stuff, we can't be a part of that. We also have to be kind one to another, be tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So, so in order for us not to grieve the Holy Spirit, we have to do both of these things. Does everyone agree with that? Amen. And being keeping ourselves in line, we have to be nice. And sometimes, I, I was thinking about this when I was writing this. Sometimes it's hard to be nice to people who's not nice to you. Uh, sometimes you uh, you want to reach out and touch him. exactly. You want to reach out and touch him, and then you you don't feel like being Christian like to people who are mean to you. But what did God say here? God said that we need to be tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God had even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So so even if people aren't nice to you, you have to be nice to them. We've been in trouble if God wasn't nice to us. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I mean uh, we're, we're not perfect and, and we mess up and we're, uh, you know, we have our faults and failures and, uh, so that means you think the best of someone, no matter what happens. I mean, cause Jesus was on the cross and he said, father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And that's the worst possible thing you could do if someone has killed them. And here he making was asking for forgiveness. forgiveness. What did you say? Making them suffer and then killing them. Yeah. So like he was Just saying lying. give them forgiveness, right? And so I'm like, people have, no one's tried to kill me and I still have a bad thought about someone. And I still, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. sometimes someone doesn't treat me very good. Or my kids, that's even the worst. If someone, I would, if someone treats my kids bad, I just am mother bear because I, <laughs> they don't deserve it. And so I feel like that, but I had the perfect example was Levi when he was in school and his best friend was saying bad things to him. And I was just right along with Levi and I was saying bad, like he's not a good friend. And I was like feeding into that. And I remember Levi forgave him. And I was still like thinking, how could he treat my kid that way? I can't. But see, Levi was like just kind hearted and I didn't know what happened on the other side and how he asked forgiveness and what his friend was going through. And so that's a thing that we don't think about when we're faced with someone who is mistreating us is that we don't know what they're going through and why they're acting that way. Because I have bad days too. Whenever I maybe don't, you know, I huff or roll my eyes or I don't have good mannerisms. Do you do that? Well, you call me out if I do it, even if I don't realize it. And so it's kind of like if you, um, when you do that, you don't, I might be having a bad day. So I'm not myself. And that happens to a lot of people. They're not, you're not yourself. But if God sent his son and he was sitting on that cross, which is the worst thing for someone to kill them, we should be able to do that too. Amen. Satan's always there so don't forgive them, be mad at them. Get it even with them and all that, but God's telling us to be kind. Amen. That's why Jesus is the mediator between God and man. Amen. And, uh, uh, he's the one that died on the cross, and he became the mediator between God and man. And, uh, he's our mediating between the Father and us to, uh, on our behalf. I'll put it that way, but we have to do our part. And if we have done wrong, and we are truly sorry for it, then he will be a mediator between. But if we're not sorry and wanting, desiring to get things right or straightened out, 
then he can't do anything for us. I mean, that's like when uh, 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 somebody under contract trying to mediate between two individuals, and one of them won't budge, and the other one said, you know, I'm the, I'm the owner, and you're, you're saying, and, you know, what I'm saying. God is the, is the creator. Jesus is the mediator between God and man, so he died for the sins of the whole world, and so he, he can take our petition to the Father. And, and the Spirit is in us, because the Spirit knows what we're doing, <laughs> and we can't get by with nothing. There's nothing we're going to get by with. So if there's anything wrong in our life, we need to say, Lord, here am I, forgive me. Because I did something wrong. Or Lord, I didn't mean to. Or, or, or Lord knows our intentions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we can't say I didn't mean to when we, when we <laughs> intentionally slapped something, done something. Uh, you know, we can't say I, I didn't mean to. But we, the best thing is just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sinned. Yeah. Because we got to be honest with God. God, God knows our hearts. God knows when we're desiring to get back right with Him, when we're wanting to make things right, when we desire to have that fellowship with Him. Amen. And I never want to be better, lose that fellowship with God. Amen. And I, it brings me to, of course I didn't write this down, but in Matthew it talks about forgiving your brother seven times seventy. That's a lot of times. Yeah, that's in one day. Can you imagine? That would be just like every waking hour that you have, like every other minute you're saying, I forgive you, you know, because seven times 70 is a uh, hundred and... Okay, so that's a lot of times. You know, that, that's, that's 10 times every hour, if that's 48 hours. That's two days. So, but I mean, so that would, that's a lot of times in a day. I mean, to, to forgive your brother that many times, you know, and so, so this verse in 32, you know, God's asking us to be, to be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So, so we've done a lot of bad things. And, uh, you know, and I think that in order for you to forgive somebody, they have to have uh, remorse. I mean, if I go up and smack Levi and, and say sorry and then smack him two seconds later, am I really sorry? You know, that, that's so, you know, you have to have just as if, if I ask for forgiveness, you know, I did something wrong. I asked God to forgive me. And, you know, two minutes later, I'm doing the same thing. You know, then was I really sorry? No. But, but now, if I slip up, uh, you know, four or five days later, then, I mean, was I, I was really sorry at that point, but I just messed up again, you know. And... Then you ask God for forgiveness. He would, he would more apt is going to forgive you, you know, if you're not doing it habitually, right, one after another. If you have a problem with anger, let's just use anger. Uh, I do have a small problem with anger. And, you know, if I blow off and then, you know, I'm good for four or five days. But if, if I punch somebody this day and then, you know, an hour later I punch the same guy, then, you know, He's not going to want to forgive me the second time, you know. So, and, and I don't know where that is in Matthew off the top of my head, but uh, I know it's in there. Uh, but uh, in uh, Mark, in the 11th chapter, verse 25, it said, And when ye stand praying, forgive if, uh, well, let me go by up and read 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever thing, uh, or so whatever ye desire, uh, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if ye have all against your enemy, that your uh, that your father 
also which in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, uh, your Father which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. Amen. So you know it, it works that uh, God forgives us, and you know if somebody trespasses against us, we have to forgive them. And uh, sometimes we, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's uh, uh, sometimes hard. We have to uh, swallow it and go on and ask God to help us. Amen. God said he would help us. But, you know, if we uh, do something to uh, give somebody, we need to ask him to give us. Amen. Uh, and, you know, we, we have to do our part. Because God can't uh, uh, ask the individual to forgive us if we trespass against them. But we have to ask them to forgive us. And sometimes that's hard for some people. Right. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for the sweet-smelling savor. So, uh... What, what do you think is the most important commandment? Amen. Amen. And then, so let, let's go to that. Uh, Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Matthew twenty two thirty six through forty. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, "Well, I'm I'm going to read up a little bit higher." Uh, so, this is the Pharisees are tempting God. So I'm going to read up here, starting in thirty three. So Matthew twenty two thirty three, And the multitude heard this, they were astounded at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees into to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked the question, tempting him and saying, Master, what is is the greatest commandment in the law. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. So those are the great two commandments. So what, what is God telling us here? That if we love him, what are we going to do? Oh, right. We're going to love people. And when, uh, of course, I, I love my parents, so I wanted to do what they told me to do when I was younger. Although I didn't always you know, do that. Uh, I did get into some trouble. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, if we love God, we're going to keep his commandments. And we're not going to be perfect in doing that, but we're going to try. And then if we... Amen. Amen. And then if we, uh, we love God and we love our neighbors, and this, when he says neighbors, uh, who is your neighbor? Everybody. Everybody. Exactly. Because my neighbor on both sides, they're not Christians. 
uh, and you know he'll he'll come over to the uh, our fence and he'll want to talk to us and stuff and uh, he smells like a a brewery and he's he's uh, slurring his words and stuff and you could tell yeah throwing some cuss words out and everything and I mean I love my neighbor uh, we don't have any problems or anything. Uh, so it's saying, telling us here that we need to love our neighbors. We need to show if, if we were mean to our neighbors and stuff, uh, would we be letting God's light show in us? Cause I mean, I have a neighbor that, uh, I have a fence and then I have two foot on the other side of the fence to where I can mow that's that I own, you know. So what does the neighbor do? Has a bulldog. Guess where she takes the bulldog to go to the bathroom every day? That two foot that I own on on the other side of the fence. And it it, it aggravates me, but it's like uh you want to just throttle her or whatever, but you know what? I love her. And the latter. Yeah, and then uh, one time we have Landon was friends with the neighbors behind us, so he would always cut down that two foot path and then All go. The boys, because our, our road's busy, so any of our bicycles have to go that way. Right. Yeah. Well, they put a ladder up there so that the kids would have to climb over the ladder or whatever so uh because they didn't want to go on their property uh so i had to go have a talk with them that okay guys you need to uh not you know try to block this because our kids go back and forth and he tried to make up something but uh but anyway you have to love your neighbors and that doesn't mean i, I uh it doesn't Exactly, exactly. Well, you know what? And so, the, even the boys didn't like it. He, they would get mad when they throw the ball until they're, they play football, but I always thought maybe they were more cantankerous. The boys acted cantankerous to him or he was annoyed by him. But, you know, a couple months ago, uh, my car wouldn't start. And I call Rick and I'm like, I'm taking Lance to school and or practice and I said my car won't start what am I supposed to do and he's like and I had texted the, the a neighbor across the street they didn't answer because he's like a Christian he's a pastor of a church and he's the first one the one on the other side no one was there the cars were gone that leaves Old the neighbor. mean neighbor <laughs> the mean neighbor and I'm like he's like just go to the neighbor I said why well, text him he goes what about the what are, what's their names and Latimer's and I'm like I'm not going to go to ladder works. And, and I did not want to do that. And so I turned around and looked, and he was bringing out his trash right then. Isn't that funny? Because I'm like, I don't want to ask him. And so I saw him, and I'm like, oh. And I said, excuse me. And I went over and asked the ladder works. And, um, you know, we have all this history. And so I always think he's so mean. And uh, he was like, I said, is there any way you could jump my battery? I said, uh, I'm taking my son to the practice. And, and he was like, well, let me go get my... So he had this big old battery charger that he had to go to his barn to get. And then when he got to my car, I was like in awe. Because that was a lot for him to do because he was out of breath. Like he, he sounded like maybe he had like heart... Um, like kind of heart heart failure or something and i'm like oh my gosh like just walking that he is a bigger guy and he is heavier and so in my mind i thought that was really a lot for him for me to ask him that and it, he went out of his way to help me and here i was having this bad thought about him and um i felt so bad and so he had his big old thing it was just didn't take no time he even brought an extension cord and plug it in and he knew what to do and the car started and and i'm like thank you so much i said can i pay you or anything oh no he said that's what neighbors are for that's what he said that's what neighbors are for and i'm like what 
And I'm like, can I give you some eggs? You want apples or pears? Or, and he's like, oh no, we just got some. It's okay. And I'm like, I got in the car and I told Lance, I am so sorry for the things I ever said about him. I said, that was not very nice of us to continue to talk like that. And I said, do you see how hard it was for him to... I even said, do you want Lance to take that back for you? Because we were like running late to get to school. Yeah. And he was like, no, that's okay. And I'm like, well, we could, I can take that back to the barn for you. And, and he was like, no, I, it's okay. And I asked him how his health was and yeah. just kind of like he told me he was having problems. And so it made me, I said, Lance, I said, do you see what, how hard it was for what he did? I said, that was really a lot. I said, I think he's nicer than we give him credit for. I said, maybe all those times he was having a bad day or he was grouchy. I said, you never know what people were going through. And I said, look how he went out of the way, his way to help us. And so it just it showed me a lesson too because of all those bad things that he did to us. And I'm thinking, I guess he must just like his things a certain way. And that's what he was, maybe the boys, you know, hit his car or something. You know what I mean? So it taught me a lesson that day. It's the kid's fault. What did you say? It was the kid's fault. Yeah. So, uh, so when, uh, when Jesus was tempted uh, of the Pharisees, he, he named what, he th what you know, Jesus said was the most important commandment. And it's all about love. You know, we got to love God. We've got, and like I said, if you love someone, like I love my parents, I tried to keep their commandments. And then, uh, of course, I didn't do it all the time, I, but I tried. And, uh, and that's what, how God wants us to, to be with him. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments is also a verse. Uh, so, and uh, now we can go back to... Ephesians 5 2. But it worked out that everybody was gone except for the bad man. <laughs> yep, yep. I know, isn't that something? It must have hey, worked have, it God, Hey, God worked it in this he, he, he gave me a lesson. And Lance knew it too. Because Lance never, well, because they go away a lot now. I think they go south. And so I don't think Lance has had that much dealing with them, like the older, you know, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. So in Ephesians 5, 2, it says, uh, and walk in love as Christ also loved us, and he hath given himself an offering and a sacrifice to God for the sweet-smelling savor. So that was uh, God's sacrifice. He loved us so much that he died for us. And uh, he died to save our sins, to save us from our sins. And he was the only one found worthy to do this. So it wasn't like he could get by with it, get out of it. Uh, and uh, so we, we have to love just like Christ loved. Uh, you know, I can't imagine giving myself or giving up one of my kids to save the whole world. The whole world. And those, those mean people out there, the people that are perverts and, you know, raping people and murdering people. And, you know, God loved us so much that he gave his son to die for them. Come to him with the contrite spirit and broke us. Amen. You know, Amen. Yes, because the, you know the the thieves on the cross, one of them laughed, and the other said, "Remember me when thou enter thy kingdom." Amen. And the Lord said, "This day shall thou be with me in paradise." Amen. Because you know he was sincere and, and earnest. The other one was just kind of making a little bit of fun of him. You know what? God. Wants us to be sincere and to be honest with him. That, uh, we need to come to him and come ask him and be sorry for the sin, sorry for what we've done, and ask God to forgive us. God will be there for us.
And he said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. If the forsaking is done, or the, uh, and the, if there's anything that's done. Uh, in our lives that, that he can't forgive is, is that we fail to ask him for it. Ask him to be earnest about it. Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and read Ephesians 5 through th 3 through 7. Ephesians 5, 3 through 7. But fornication and all uncleanness, cleanliness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremongers, nor unclean persons, nor covetous men, nor who, who is idle, an idler, adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers of them. Okay, so in, in these verses, these are all bad things. Of course, everyone knows that fornicators, unclean, covetousness, uh, filthiness, uh, foolish talking, jesting, uh, you know, all these things are bad things. We don't want no part of those things. But in verse 7, it says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. What does that mean to you guys? Amen. So, so what happens if you're partaker or... You're, and maybe not even partaking of it, but you're with them when they're doing these things. That, it, it like rubs, I, I think it rubs off on you. It might influence you. Exactly. It may influence you. It may, uh, and not only, if someone sees you, let's just say, I, I went to a, a place that Christians don't go to and Dorothy sees me going in there. What's Dorothy going to think of me? So that's going to hurt my life. I'm going to wonder why you're going in there. Exactly. So Dorothy's going to wonder why I'm going in there. So we need to make sure that we keep away from this stuff. Because if we, like Dorothy said, that if we're partaking or with people who are partaking in this, it may rub off on us. Go ahead. My, my dad, when I was growing up, he had a problem with alcohol. And one day we were going somewhere and I was told, he was talking and he was kind of, or he had quite a bit. I said, Dad, I said, when, I'm with you, when you're sober, I'd rather be with you than anyone. But when you're drinking, I'd rather be with anyone but you. He said, son, I'm sorry you feel it. I said, Dad, how can I feel it? Because it was the way you are. And he, he just, that was it in the, in the conversation. But he, if he wanted the honest answer, and I gave him the best I knew how to answer. But I loved to be with my dad when he was sober. And, and then, I mean, we could talk about hunting and working or being in the field working or whatever. But when he was drinking, he was just uh, just stuttering and blundering and going on. But you know that that's the way the world is. Amen. And the only life that the world sees is God's people. That that God's people are different from what they are. And sometimes the truth hurts. Amen. And and it it hurt them. 
and, but he, he told me later he said that he was uh, uh, glad for the comment that I made. But it was several years later when, after he finally quit drinking. But you know, he had to do it. He had to make that decision. He went, he was going to go to an alcoholic, anonymous. I mean, going to a hospital before he could be dry him out. And he told mom, and he, and he, he told, it's the words he said, he said, hell, if I can do it there, I can do it at home. And he went home, and mom took care of him, and he cut hold of nothing in his hand to where he could feed himself or drink. He was so nervous and everything. But he quit, and the rest of his life, as far as I know, up until just about the time he got ready, not too long before he died. He wound my grandpa's kind of, I told him to say, I had some, one, one, one drink won't hurt you. And my dad took one, and he had been sober for about 20 some years. And he was right back in the same old place. Never let sin tell you that a little bit won't hurt you. Amen. Because sin is sin. If it's a lie, it's just as bad as throwing out shot somebody. Because sin will send us to, to the wrong place, to hell. Amen. But the choice is ours. We've got to always keep that in mind. We are the ones that choose or don't choose. We, if we do sin, we said to have an after with Jesus Christ and righteousness, which is a perpetuation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for sins of the whole world. So we have a, 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 a priority to go to Him and ask Him to forgive us if we sin. But then the biggest, the best thing to do is not sin, to resist and, and and turn away, walk away, go the other way. But we have to choose to do that. The world will put it out there for us. You probably have, they're taught probably times every day that though somebody will throw something in front of you and you'd like to smack it. <laughs> Get a little bit. But you have to resist. And that's, yeah. that's the thing that we have to do is resist. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us. Here. So how can we... Uh not be partakers with them, but still try to get them saved. You can show your light and they can see your life. And when you have a chance to talk about the Lord, that's when you do it. And you know, there's another part of that. Um, like the people you're around and your friends you're around affect who you become too. I think about even Izzy, when I, uh, when we're out and about, like yeah, we, I told her I'd get ice cream, but um, we had to stop and get gas, and we went in the speedway. And so I said, "You can let's get ice cream," and the ice cream is gone. So I was like, "I guess we'll have to we'll go home and have ice cream at home." But I let her get chips and stuff. But I watched her and what she did. She walked in front of someone, and she said, "Excuse me," and like I'm thinking, the only reason she knew to do that is what she was around and how what she, how she's taught. And like that also is an example of like the good you're around. That is, I mean that that shows who you are also, because you know, you know like the rotten fruit it destroys the whole bag, Amen. or the egg or the onion. It kind of makes everything else bad. But if you're if it's good, then you kind of you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. That is a good analogy because a, a potato, a rotten potato. The whole thing is going to get rotten if you just leave it in there. So you need to make sure you get the rotten potato out of your life. So, Well, uh, next week we will start in Ephesians 5 and 8. Ephesians 5 and 8.